Hey everyone, Mr. Montgomery again. We are on page 265 today. So if you don't have your workbook out for some reason, pause video, hit the space bar, get your workbook out, get to page 265. But if you're already on that page, we're going to keep on moving. So today we're on, the lesson we're on today is lesson 6-4. And we're still going to be interpreting data but we're going to be doing it with a little bit of a twist. So instead of just comparing two numbers uh, on a chart, today we're going to be able to complete a chart with just some information given to us. Now I'm going to show you guys two different ways that we can do this, and I want you to pick the way that works best for you. I know not everyone thinks the same way, and that's fine. So I will show you guys two different very quick and easy ways to do this so you can do this on your own without any problems. So uh, so we have a little story problem and uh, let's read it first see what we're dealing with here and as we read of course like always we will circle the important parts. At the park Susan sees 13 animals. So circle 13 they, they're giving us a, a number. There's a reason they're doing that. So we circle it. So there's 13 animals in all. So the words in and all, that's that phrase that we always look for. That usually means that if we add two numbers together with a plus sign, we will get the answer over here. Right? Uh, nine are birds. So they're telling us right here in this picture that we have nine birds on this side of our chart. The rest are rabbits. How can Susan complete the table to show this? Now, if I were to ask you, how many rabbits do we need? How would you solve that? Do you have an idea about how you, you would like to solve it? If you're not sure, let me give you a little hint. So we know that there's 13 in all, so I'm going to write the number, yeah, let me make a little space here. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm hoping that when I do this, some light bulbs go off in your brain and you go, oh my goodness, this looks so familiar. So our total is 13, right? I'm going to write 13 up here and make a big box around it. Now, does this chart now look familiar? I sure hope so. Because right now, it looks like a part, part, whole chart. So we know that we have a total 13, right, up there. And we know that the one part are birds, and we're missing the other part. So if we were to make this into addition sentence, it would be 9 plus blank equals 13. So, of course, you could use a number line to solve this. Or, or... Actually, correction, I'm, I'm actually going to show you guys three ways to solve this. Sorry, but use the way it works best for you. Uh, or we could count on from nine, because we know we have nine birds. We can count on and draw until we reach 13. Now, I'm not going to do an amazing drawing. If you're going to do this method, just make a very simple shape, and you can add little details later. So for the rabbits, I'm just going to make like an oval. Okay, so we're starting from nine. One more is 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I counted all the way up to 13, so I stop. And then, of course, you can make little bunny ears or something after that to show that these are rabbits. And give them whatever kind of nose, some whiskers, whatever. Yeah, that stuff's not super duper important. But I'm showing you guys this just so you know that if you're going to use this method, make sure you do a simple drawing first until you reach your answer. Then you add your details after. So we know that we have four. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, that works. Another way we can figure this out is because of how we set it up, we can use a number line, right? You can say, you know what? I'm going to count the jumps from 9 
to 13 because these are the numbers that we know. And then the, we're just missing the jump number. Start from 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. It was 4 jumps. We still got the same answer, didn't we? We did. And now the last method I will show you is uh, using, we call this the inverse or related facts like we learned a few units ago. Since we made this into an addition problem with a missing part, maybe you don't like problems like that. You can use the inverse to solve this. And the inverse is just a fancy math term for saying related fact. And a related fact for an addition problem is the subtraction. So 13 minus 9 equals, well, if you take 9 away from 13, you still get 4. Okay? So you can either take the two numbers and subtract them. You can find the jump number. Or you can just count on as you draw. And then that's it. So they're all fairly simple ways to do this. And as we go through some practice, I will give you an example. There are more examples as we keep going. So let's go ahead and go to page 266 and get some more practice. All right, everybody. So here's page 266. And I know your graph or your, uh, yeah, your picture graph looks a little bit different in your book. I erased what they drew because that just really bugs me that they do it for us. We want the practice problem. We need to practice. And I, it, it bugs me when they give us the, the answers like that right away. If they're going to do that, they need to give us more practice problems. But anyway, let's go into problem number one right here. Uh, we're going to take this step by step. So let's read our story first and circle the important things that we hear. Jim asks nine members of his family for their favorite fruit. Well, that number nine is pretty special. That tells us the total. He's asking nine members of his family. So we already know that on this picture graph, we should have a total of nine. Six people say they like oranges. So right here we have six pictures of oranges. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. The rest say they like apples. How many people say they like apples? I would recommend for this, just like before, that it's probably easier for us to draw as we count. So uh, I can just get a red here. And we know we have six down here, right? There's six oranges. Uh, and I'm going to count on from 6. So 1 more than 6 is 7. 1 more than 7 is 8. 1 more than 8 is 9. So I reached all the way up to that number 9. And I stop. Now just look at how many I drew. I drew 1, 2, 3 apples. So 3 members of his family like apples. And we can even check our work by subtracting 6 from 9. And you could also use this method to see how many you need to draw in your picture graph. And I'll show you guys right here. So if we take, so we know that 9 is the total. So we, 9 goes first because it's our big number. 9 minus the part we know, which is 6, right? So 9 minus 6 is 3. If you were to do the subtracting first, you would already know you need three apples, and you just draw three apples right away. And it's not a big deal. So either method works fine. And I'm just coloring these in just so it not, doesn't have to be a previous on picture graph, but uh, yeah, we got to make sure we color it in a little bit. But no matter which way you like to go do it, guys, you can either count on until you reach the total, or subtract the total from the part you know and find that missing part, which was three. Okay, so let's go to the next page. You're going to try a practice problem on your own. So let's go to page 267. 
and see what problem they have in store for us. Okay, guys, so here's problem number two. Now, I'm going to read it for you. Make sure you're circling all the important stuff. And I might even give you one or two hints. Okay, so make sure you got those listening ears turned on. It says, a shelf at a store holds 11 stuffed animals. Sounds pretty special. Gotta circle it. There are five stuffed bears and the rest are stuffed penguins. Oh, got that number five right there. Coming out of nowhere. It's gotta be, it's gotta be important. And so they're telling us right now the total. We know that there are 11 stuffed animals. Okay, so that is our total. The amount of bears we have is five. You need to find out how many penguins we need. Now, we talked about a couple different ways you can solve this. Use the way that works best for you. All right, so go ahead and give this a shot. Try number two completely on your own. Oh, and if you're doing the uh, counting on as you draw, Remember, make it a very simple shape so you don't lose track. For a penguin, I would recommend doing a, a fun oval or egg shape. Okay, if you're still working on this, that's fine. Please pause the video, take your time. It is so, so important. It's so important that I'm even going to use a special big kid word. We call it paramount. When something is super important, we say it is paramount. It is the most important thing you need to do. So if you didn't finish that problem yet, it's paramount that you finish it on your own first. If you're done, let's, uh, let's solve this problem two different ways and make sure that your answers are correct. So I'm just going to use a different color for fun. Get rid of the little arrow. All right. So we know we have 11 and there's five bears. I'm going to count on from five all the way to 11. Okay. So after five, we have six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. So I reach 11, so I stop. And I just count how many I drew. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I drew 6 penguins. And if I want to check my work, I could, sh I could easily just do an easy subtraction problem. Because that is going to work for all of these. We can subtract with every single one of these. So if you're really good at subtraction, totally go for it. Subtract the two numbers instead. Because watch this. We just set it up. 11 minus 5. If you need a number line, we can make that really quick. 11, 10, 9. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry guys. 7. Six. Now, I shouldn't need any more than that. I'll start at 11, make five jumps backwards. One, two, three, four, five. I still landed on six. So, I absolutely need six penguins. You can either subtract the two numbers or uh, do the counting on. That is probably, in my opinion, the two easiest ways. I know I did mention a third way earlier, but I feel like a lot of friends do have trouble with that. So I would recommend picking one of these two methods, either counting on as you draw until you reach that total that they give you, or you just subtract the two numbers and find the difference. Either way, you get the correct answer. How awesome is that? So I would like for you guys to try number three and four completely on your own. 
I will read them for you. After I read each one, I recommend that you pause the video so that way you can take your time with each one. So for number three, Zach plays 17 games in a season. Nine of the games are soccer games, and the rest are baseball. So we have nine soccer, right? That total of both of these has to be 17. How many of the games are baseball out of those 17? All right, and then number four, they're changing it up with a tally mark chart. So... Make sure you pay very close attention to the words here about what they want us to do with this chart. They might have they might change things up since we're no longer working with a picture graph. So it says right here for number four, Jen's class makes a graph about two of their favorite kinds of movies. So they're asking friends who likes funny movies and who likes scary movies. Ooh. And it says, how many students took the survey? When they say, how many students took the survey, that's the same as saying, how many students in all. It is the same thing. That is the biggest hint I can give you right now, okay? Try those two on your own, guys. Uh, if you're in my class, after you're done those two, go on our Google Classroom and do the IXL assignment. If you're not in my classroom, please check with your teacher to see if they have any independent work that they would like you to do instead of the assignments that I have. Okay, so hopefully this uh, this lesson was actually pretty fun for you guys. It wasn't too crazy. I'm hoping everyone understands it perfectly. If you have questions, please make sure you let me know. Or if you're in a different class, let your teacher know if you're confused about anything at all. Anything. All right. Uh, but that's it, guys. I'll see you later, and I hope you have a great day.